Yo, what's going on guys? Crispy Flakes here. I just have to say one quick thing. Abra, Abra, Kadabra. I'm about to reach out in my bag, bro. Banger of a song, man. Absolutely knocking fucks, bro. Uh, yo, 2024 NBA Finals. The matchup is in. Boston Celtics, Dallas Mavericks. Who is gonna win, man? Let me know in the comment section below. No, for real. I'm like... That's my reaction when I try to decide who wins. So you guys, let me know in the comments. Who's gonna win it? I think I have an idea. We're gonna check out some matchups, um, some insights, some analytics, statistics, mathematics, by my guy, the flight Mike. Let's get it. Y'all saw the doubters that were saying that y'all wouldn't work. Four for 12 points, eight rebounds. And now a message from this crowd. The D grade that ESPN gave y'all. Could y'all talk about just... Yeah, they gave I mean, I think it came right... For the trade from the Nets. So could you... Could you... <laughs> I mean, we're in the, the finals, Boston right? The Boston Celtics have made it back to the <laughs> NBA Finals. And this time, it's going to be Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown trying to get their first championship versus Luka Doncic. Who is they need to do it. The same. Tatum, it's time, my friend. These two teams run so deep. So before we get to the content, make sure you drop like, subscribe, and turn on our notifications to help the channel. Grow. Well, I'm going to say one quick thing here, too. This uh this matchup, I, I think the thing that's really gonna dictate it, because you know you got Tatum, we got Brown, we got Kyrie, you got Luca, but it's gonna come down to more than that. You know, all those guys are gonna get theirs, not so many chokes, of course. But uh I think whoever controls the pace of this series is gonna win. I believe the uh, Boston Celtics are pretty low down in pacing. I think they're like 24th or something, the NBA. Uh and the Mavericks are six. So, I mean, Tatum and Luka, they both kind of like Carmelo with Paul Pierce mobility. Um, but they're going to get their own, right? But they're both kind of slower players. So, it's going to be everybody else. It's going to be who's controlling the flow of the game. And that's what's going to, essentially, in my opinion, decide it. What do you guys think? Now that we got all that out of the way, cue the intro. Oh, shoot. I didn't even get to the intro. I'm still blabbing. I'm still blabbing. I don't shut up. That's a pretty cool intro, though. That's me when I get the munchies. <laughs> Yo, I love Flood Mike, by the way. Before we start this upload, Prize Picks has us with another free Oh, Prize Picks, all right, man. We always got to show, always got to show the, uh, the, uh, oh, oh, we there? Okay. Use code Flight Mike. I see it at the bottom. Yeah, Flight Mike is the code. Dallas Mavericks right. are even bigger winners for making it to the NBA Finals. The only person that I could think of that is a huge loser in this scenario is Grant Williams. <laughs> oh my God, poor guy. I mean, one year ago, Grant Williams was a huge role player on the Boston Celtics, but because of the brand new CBA, the Celtics had to move on from I mean, them. I've been calling him a chubby PJ Tucker for I don't know how long and nobody wanted to hear it. But I'm even taking away that role because he's a brick, man. I want to give that role to PJ Washington. Yo. That's the first time I made the connection that both their names are PJs, bro. We got two PJs in the NBA. They traded Grant Williams to the Dallas Mavericks in a sign and trade agreement, but Grant Williams wasn't getting along with the Dallas PJ Mavericks. Washington's and the new PJ Tucker, man. Trade deadline to the Charlotte oh, Hornets. And now shrunken. both of his former teams are in the NBA Finals, on, and Grant Williams is on the Charlotte Hornets. Dealing with teammates that are involved in alleged lawsuits for DV, allegedly running over a yeah, kid's about to be foot, the Pistons franchise player. We're on the street. An old kid in that type of situation to begin with, and if you don't know street, what I'm talking I want to be, about, I'll be indoors. a whole video on this absurd lamello ball situation we'll leave it in the end screen make sure you check that one out because it's absurd the boston celtics have frequently been referred to as the san francisco 49ers of the nba it's a team that has a plethora of talent that is constructed really really well that has two capable stars that have yet to even hit the prime of their careers in jason tatum and jalen brown but there are questions of whether i don't know you know i, I think that's interesting actually... um when i think about the term you know prime and peaks of careers and stuff 
it makes me wonder if that's going to start shifting a bit because I feel like players are getting so many more minutes at such a uh, such a younger age where it's like by the time they get like in their early 30s, it might be wore the heck out. But then again, there's better like medicine and stuff like that. So championship together and the Boston Celtics have been very aggressive in trying to answer that question. This past year, the Boston Celtics decided to go all in, trading one of their core players in Marcus Smart to get back Kristaps Porzingis. They weren't done there because they also traded for Drew Holiday. This team is going is to Chris Tapp's going to be good to go for the finals or what this offseason as Jalen Brown signed a five-year 303.7 million happy for JB last year and this summer Jason Tatum Deserve that is money. about to break the bank as well as he could sign a five-year 338 y'all and you see if someone make a half a bill extension. half a billion the dollars that the Celtics signed Drew Holiday to a four-year 135 million dollar contract right. extension just a month ago and they currently have big contract Zingas on a for that old man 60 million dollar contract so That's a good deal for Chris Tops. That is fully capped out. This is the core of the Boston Celtics, and they're all in on this core. And if it doesn't work out, then this summer, there's a lot of questions that this team is going to have to answer. Jalen Brown even said it himself when he won the Eastern Conference Finals MVP award, saying that we feel like we're a different team than we were last year and the year before that. I know everybody wants to continue. Well, yeah, different to players on the roster. Makes sense. What was Checks out. In the past, but we've had a different team every single year. Different coaches. We've had like three coaches coaches in the last five years and still people want to make it seem like it's the same it's the same it's the same time has gone by experience has been gained and i think 100%. we're ready to put our best foot forward there's no question the boston celtics i mean you know like 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 if you're james harden and you keep on choking you know in the playoffs and stuff then eventually you're known as the choker but i you know i think with tatum and brown like they ain't there yet you know what i'm saying like they are a different team different experiences like let's see how this finals goes you know tremendous amount of experience in the postseason and this is something that i said would aid them moving down their careers all the way back in jason tatum's rookie season when they made it to the eastern conference finals so now that they have this incredibly long and arduous road to the nba finals would they finally be able to conclude their season with an nba championship many teams are roasting the celtics for having what could have been the easiest path to the oh, NBA shit. finals but when you compare NBA it to fans y'all got to shut the hell up Every year, it's something else. The Mickey Mouse ring. Asterisk by your finals. Like, shut the hell up. Can we just enjoy basketball and give players credit? If you schedule all you bitch asses in the NBA. It's no easy for it's not easy for anybody. Easy. Their Eastern Conference teams that made it to the NBA Finals was it really that easy? The Boston Celtics just salty Buck fans the heat in the first round when the Miami Heat didn't have Jimmy salty Butler. Heat fans face off against the Cleveland salty Cavaliers, Laker fans got takeaway discredit. I hate it for two of those games. They would then sweep the Indiana Pacers, but the Pacers wouldn't have Tyrese Halliburton in two of those games. That don't matter. They, they have Chris Tops. The NBA Finals. But when you compare it to other that don't matter. They don't have Chris Tops. Path. I mean, in 2013, the Miami Heat faced off against the Chicago Bulls versus Derrick Rose and the Pacers without Danny Granger. In 2015, Granger, Granger, the Cavaliers man. played an incredibly injured and battered Atlanta Hawks team in the conference finals. In 2016, Everybody hurting by the time. Cavaliers made it to the NBA finals. Those games roll around. The Warriors team that lost Andrew Bogut for half the series and lost Draymond Green for game five. Steph Curry was playing on a very bad MCL sprain as well during that series. In 2017, Isaiah Thomas was playing with a severe hip injury. I got a shin splint right now for about two weeks now. Faced off against the Boston Celtics without Kyrie Irving and without Gordon Hayward. Wait, was that the Isaiah Cavaliers Thomas? Yo, I heard some crazy story about him recently. And I'm glad he's doing okay. Just wanted to point that out. Cavaliers faced off against the Boston Celtics without Kyrie Irving and without Gordon Hayward. And the Cavaliers barely won in seven games. I'm not saying that the Celtics' path to the NBA Finals wasn't easy. Ah, I forgot I'm being played a Lakers fan. <laughs> at the same time, coming into this season, I felt like the Boston Celtics were the favorite in the East. They had the most continuity, they made sizable upgrades to their roster, and they had the most experience. When you take a look at the Boston Celtics' record, they had 14 more wins than the second place team of the East. That don't matter in the playoffs. The were kind of a shit show throughout the season. The Philadelphia yep. 76ers were injured throughout the season. The Cleveland Cavaliers are still trying to figure things out. I think a successful coaching change could potentially get there. There really wasn't any other team in the Eastern Conference that I could have saw making it to the NBA Finals this year than the Boston Celtics. Now, is this a testament to how easy their path <clears throat> was? Or is it a testament to their greatness? Or is it a testament to how weak the Eastern Conference has become? You can let me know in the comment section down below. The Boston mm. Celtics are facing off I just think the they're Dallas the best Mavericks team in the East. 
team that desperately needed this NBA Finals run, a team that has been trying to figure out how to put Luka Doncic in a situation to consistently compete for championships from the moment that they drafted him. Yeah, I gotta say real quick here about the Dallas Mavericks. Um, I I love what they've done to build around Luka. Kyrie, I think, has been fantastic for him. I love the addition to P.J. Walsh. Then you got Derek Lively, who is the type of guy, you know, man, catch them lob seven-footer out there. Like, you got some quick players out there, man. Some shooters. Like, is it is it perfect? Could there be a few more pieces? I mean, yeah, you know, I do look at this team here. It's definitely top-heavy, you know. I like Derek Jones Jr. too, man. You know, I mean, but this is Lucas series to be had, you know. It's going to come down to Lucas' play. Luka, I think Kyrie got to be robbing to get to LeBron. You know, um, and then over for the Celtics here, man. I mean, they're just so, so balanced. Yeah, Chris Topps only played four games here in the uh, postseason. So if he's not playing, I mean, Al Horford at the age of 92, like, you know, he's a vet. He knows how to get it done. They got Xavier Tillman. You know, he's no slouch. Man, it's really hard to tell. Because I don't really see anybody out here stopping Luka. Dude's averaging, you know, over 30 points per game in the playoffs. The only other player ever do that is Michael Jordan. So, I mean. But then again, who's that going to stop, you know, Tatum and Brown? I don't know. Luka Doncic was starting to get this reputation of being just James Harden 2.0, a player that knew how to stuff the stat sheet in a masterful way. No, no, no. He's, he's, he's better than James Harden is or, or ever was. Um... The issue is that they were building James Harden hero ball style offense around Luka. You know, so they were trying to build around him as if he is James Harden. And that just, yeah, that was just uh, poor, you know, management. To get you to the NBA Finals. But to the Dallas Mavericks credit, they did everything they possibly could to get Luka Doncic the help they needed. Starting all the way from trading for Kyrie Irving to continuing with the... Yeah, there's some other hoopers the on that team. You know, they're not just ball watching like on the hero ball days attempt to trade for with Grant Harden. Williams, but on from him when that didn't work and during the trade deadline they swung a masterful trade for Daniel Gafford. Love uh, Gafford. Doncic made the most Love of his strengths and mitigated his weaknesses. But the one storyline that we're all looking forward to in a fan since his bold days. NBA Finals matchup has to be Kyrie Irving's history with the Boston Celtics. Mm -hmm. Remember Kyrie Irving about a year and a half ago had a completely different perception about his career. A player that was melodramatic about everything. A player that had everything handed to him. A player that had the career that any basketball player would want but but turned it down. He had the opportunity to play with LeBron James. But because of this one reporter, it seems like he didn't want to be LeBron James's teammate anymore. Let me. Sorry, um, Tristan called LeBron a great father at the Chicago game. What? Yeah. He did. Yeah, that, I remember that. That's cringe. Don't ask stupid stuff, reporters. Media, y'all gotta shut the hell up sometimes. My goodness gracious. Oh, a great father. father. Oh, I thought he's... Y'all know I got bro. I interpreted that. That's completely wrong. Okay. I thought you said he was a great father to him. I was like, what? Called him a great father. So yeah. what type of parental role has he played? Oh my gosh. Shut up. up. Oh, okay, so you. Abracadabra. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, fire the parental role? I, honestly, I'm, I'm, you know, he's. <laughs> don't answer it. I don't know how to really answer that question. I'm, he's been a, he's been a, a great leader for us. I wouldn't. I have one father. I, that's my dad, Frederick Irving. Eventually, he would get traded to the Boston Same Celtics. Here, my father, he was going to be the Jordan Irving. Of an Eastern Conference superpower and one of the most storied franchises in the NBA. Even at some point, deciding to commit to the city of Boston. But there will be more spaces up there. Kyrie, how important is it to see God, number really 11 like up there shirt. one day? That's an awesome it's shirt. A, <laughs> it's, it's quite important. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I appreciate that, Scout. I joined him, but I shared it with some of my teammates as well as the organization and everyone else in Boston. If you guys will have me back, I plan on re-signing here next year. Boom! So. But then very shortly after, he started flirting oh, with Kevin no. Durant. Oh, no. Oh, Kyrie. Oh, my goodness. If the Mavericks lose this series, the amount of Kyrie finally bought, brought Boston a ring jokes are going to be insufferable.
next thing you know, Kyrie Irving decided to go to Brooklyn to team up with Kevin Durant. And his stint with Brooklyn was very, very interesting. In his preseason return to Boston, he would be caught burning sage at the TD Garden in order to cleanse the energy in the building. And then things would get to a brand new point when the Brooklyn Nets faced off against the Boston Celtics that year in the playoffs. Kyrie Irving accused the Boston Celtics of racism. I mean, it's not my first time being an opponent in, in Boston. Uh, so, you know, I'm just looking forward to competing with my teammates and, um, you know, hopefully we can just keep it strictly basketball. You know, there's no belligerence or any racism going and on. And by the way, racism. by the way, we got to say it real quick here that when, when people say that, 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 that different basketball teams, you know, are using inappropriate language, I, I, and I know it's easy to get like offended by that and be like, uh, you know, like, well, don't say everybody like that is in Boston. Cause that is, that is very true. You know, man, like I, I don't, I don't like where like, 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 you know, a little Timmy that loves basketball shouldn't be called you know a racist because freaking uh billy bob you know went to a celtics game hell of a too much jack daniels you know what i'm saying like i, I don't know man i just we'll just suck <laughs> they well, yeah, people just suck. um but even if it is it's, it's part of but do not ruin it for little game, timmy and we're just gonna focus on what we can control Should be part of the game is it something you've experienced in boston before i'm not the only one that could attest to this but it's just you know it won't, it, <laughs> it is what it say? is. Oh, right. Right. Hey, don't be racist. <laughs> and the Let's play some basketball. Kyrie Irving whenever he took Get that BS out. Game three of that series versus Boston. Fans, he played one earlier when there were no fans in the building. This is when he was introduced to the crowd. Oh, yeah, he deserves to get booed. Pretty he told a child he was going to resign, or was that Cavs? Gave up Jay Crowder, Isaiah Thomas, and assets in order to get him. Oh, man, skipped it. <laughs> Man, leaves his easy itch alone. My man said, my man said, uh, Isaiah J and assets. Anti Zizich is watching this crying his eyes out now, Mike. The fact that this guy was supposed to be your franchise cornerstone and then he just turned his back on you after promising he'd stay, I think it's pretty normal to boo Kyrie Irving in this instance. But Kyrie Irving would escalate this entire beef, stepping on Lucky after a game <laughs> four victory versus the Celtics, which got a lot of Celtic fans upset. And this would just kick off one of the most exciting rivalries in sports. In the 2022 playoffs, fans would start to cheer Kyrie sucks. In the fourth quarter. <laughs> I think that's kind of annoying. Um, man, I don't know, man. Celtic fans kind of kind of taking me off of some of this, bro. Because you know what? I'm just oh, we're on the we're on the Celtics. You know, I'm looking over here at Kyrie Irving, and I'm looking at his career, and I'm looking at uh at his stats. Yup, here we are. And do you want to know what I see? I see Kyrie Irving not sucking. He's a good basketball player. Or that would take us to where oh, we are suck. in this rivalry right you now. You can't chance something really that's not that true. Much between the Celtics and Kyrie Irving because the 2023 season was when Kyrie Irving would get traded to the Dallas Mavericks, and it hasn't become relevant until now. But Celtic fans certainly didn't forget because they Ooh, chanted. Theo Vaughn got a new uh, podcast, school lunch lady. Other two that's interesting. Ago. Four for twelve points, eight rebounds. Yes. And now a message from this crowd. And the fact that these two are facing off against one another in the NBA Finals is certainly going to make this way more interesting. As for my personal prediction, Luka Doncic's career so far has him slowly progressing to where he wants to finish mm -hmm. and gradually climbing the ladder. For example, during the 2022 season, he finally made it to the Western Conference Finals. Step he missed in the stones. playoffs last year, but he was able to make it to the NBA Finals this year. When you take a look at the Minnesota Timberwolves team, they were the best defensive team in the NBA this year, leading the league in defensive rating, but they were the 16th best offensive team this year. You compare that to the Boston Celtics, they were the top team in terms of offensive rating, and they were the third best team in terms of defensive rating. Right. They also led the league in net rating. I feel like the combination of Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Andrew Hall. Yeah, but then again, like, I think that kind of goes back to the argument, like how much of it is that the Celtics are great or how much of it is that the Eastern Conference is just that bad. I mean, 
in my opinion, like the Celtics obviously are a great team. Oh, let me finish Mike's opinion here. Experience my apologies. In the NBA Finals, plus the fact that the Celtics have a all-around better team, is going to result in the Boston Celtics being able to win this series in five games. So that's my personal prediction. I've been wrong before. As a Laker fan, I would prefer that not to happen. <laughs> let me know in the comment section down below. Yeah, just don't be Stephen A. Smith wrong, right? Man, go on a streak. Um, goodness, man. Like, who do I have winning this? It's still really, it's, I think Mike brought up some good points. I, I think that the Celtics are definitely the deeper team. And that's the thing where it's like, where are we at here? Yeah, where it's like, it's like Luka's, you know, going insane with the scoring, but you know, he's averaging 34 points per game. Tatum, if 34 points is actually crazy. Tatum's at 26. And I was going to make like, well, he's only like two points away. But it's like, no, he's actually going absolutely insane. Um, you know, you might want to go the uh, 2004 Pistons route here. And if you're the Celtics and just kind of pick your poison, you might want to let Luka do his thing, but stop everybody else. Let Shaq do his thing, but stop Kobe, you know? But then for the, Ma but the Mavericks, I mean, I just really like how they're built too, though, man. I would say my gut feeling is the Celtics winning. But I think I'm going to root for the Mavericks. And I'm sorry, Boston Celtic fans. You guys had me a few seasons ago. But, yeah, I just want to see Dallas run, I guess. No real reason. Celtics can win, too. That's fine. I don't care. Let's say uh, Celtics by 1.7 games. It's going to be, the score's going to be 3-4. to four. 